this morning's guest is going to be talking about sugar, but the statistics aren't sweet. Who is she? You'll meet her. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in the Design Center at the Stone Temple in the industrial park behind Myrtle Beach Lighting. We're focused on the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and we're visiting with one of its dedicated volunteers, Monica Bailey. Good morning, Monica. Good morning, Greg. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. How about this Design Center? This place is amazing, Beautiful. isn't it? Beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've been through here earlier this morning. It's great for them to let us in early in the morning on a Wednesday, uh, of course, particularly to highlight juvenile diabetes and so much of what's going on. Of course, your daughter mm -hmm. and much of what how this has impacted her life over the last, is it nine and a half years? Right. Absolutely. Year? Almost ten years now. Mm -hmm. Wow. When did y'all? When exactly did y'all find out that she, uh, or when was she diagnosed with juvenile diabetes? Right. Well, you know, we were like most brand new parents, brand new baby, life is perfect. And um, a few months after she was diagnosed, she had an ear infection that would not go away. And then she began displaying the typical symptoms of diabetes: extreme thirst, uh, frequent urination. She lost a massive, a massive amount of weight at just the age of nine months took her to the doctor and they immediately sent us to the pediatric intensive care unit of our local hospital and mm -hmm. she stayed there for two days uh, and we were told that she could slip into a coma it was that severe at that time but thank goodness she did not and um, you know we have we deal with this daily battle uh, every day and have for nine years now mm, she was less than a year old oh yes nine and a half months Wow mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. uncommon in fact the pediatrician had not seen a case that young before which is why we almost lost her they didn't mm. think to, to look for that is that right mm -hmm. these days is uh, is it uh, in setting uh, at an earlier age does it keep getting earlier or has that been an well, issue sadly um, that has been the trend mm -hmm. in fact over the past five years statistics show us that children under the age of five who are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes that number has doubled in the past no. five years mm -hmm. oh. and no one seems to know why so mm. definitely moving in the wrong direction it looked like when I was visiting the JDRF.org JDRF site mm -hmm. that a lot more dollars have been raised to try to come up with a cure to, uh, mm -hmm. to juvenile diabetes, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, mm -hmm. those numbers seem to be going up. That's right. Well, and that's why I think there's such an imminent need to find a cure. Mm -hmm. It's too easy to put things off and think, well, you know, insulin's out there and, and, and there's other means to take care of children with diabetes, but really there's no substitution for that cure. Mm, mm, mm. That is incredible. What is the difference, Monica, between type 1 and is there another? Is it type 2 diabetes? Right. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm glad you asked that question because it's a tremendous difference. Um, type 2 diabetes makes up uh, 80 to 85 percent of Americans have type 2. And that is where uh, their pancreas does make insulin, but mm -hmm. the body does not metabolize it properly. Um, so oftentimes that can be treated with oral medication, proper diet, uh, exercise, and can go away if taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, however, type 1, like my daughter has, juvenile diabetes, that accounts for about 10 to 15 percent of all cases. And that is where the body um, turns on itself, so to speak. The auto, it's an autoimmune disorder. Mm -hmm. And the immune system, which should be uh, killing viruses and keeping us healthy, has turned on the pancreas and shuts it down. And essentially, the pancreas cannot make insulin anymore. So those children will have diabetes for the rest of their life um, or until a cure is found. So or huge until difference. a cure is found, mm -hmm. absolutely. So about 10 to 15 percent of persons are suffering from diabetes. Right, right, have that type. And, and it ends up being about uh, 16 million people, though, across the country. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I was fascinated to see those figures of the hundreds of millions of persons that are impacted by diabetes in general. Right. But, of course, that uh, the 16 million there mm -hmm. impact, that's mm -hmm. incredible. You're right. That is incredible. Is this hereditary, Monica? Is this something that... Uh, uh, yeah. There is a genetic um, factor there. And, you know, what I find interesting, though, is that 80% of the uh, children who are diagnosed with type 1 have no family history of it, though. Is that right? No family history. Mm -hmm. However, once um, they've been diagnosed, there is a definite 
tendency to carry on that gene. I know for us, um, we have another child, Cameron, and one on the way. Oh, great. And Congratulations. So, um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And so our children have up to a 20% chance of developing the disease at mm. some point in their life, um, type 1. And then uh, parents who have insulin-dependent diabetes um, have up to a 50% chance of passing that on to their children. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So if you or Scott had had um, um, either type 1 or type 2? or, uh, or Type 1, principally really. Type mm -hmm. 1. Absolutely. They have a 50% chance right. of passing that right. on. Right, up to a 50%. Neither of y'all are inflicted with no, type 1, No, we right? were one of those statistics um, where 80%, you know, mm -hmm. there was no family history of type 1 in our family. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. How is this, uh, you know, we, obviously there's probably a lot that um, your daughter doesn't share, but probably a lot that she does share about how this imp impacts her life. Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, mm -hmm. instances that you're either able to watch or that she talks about, which is the most difficult for her to, uh, you know, is right. equally incredible. And I know um, what you wanted to highlight, and you said that earlier this morning, highlight the JDRF.org mm -hmm. website because it has so many incredible facts and figures. Right. But of course, it has a lot of powerful quotes from children mm -hmm. and folks of all ages. Mary Tyler Moore, mm -hmm. who's the mm -hmm. international spokesperson for JDRF. Right. There's right. some strong uh, feelings mm -hmm. that go into uh, children suffering mm -hmm. from this chronic disease. Absolutely. And, you know, on the one hand, Crystal has had this di uh, disease all of her life, mm -hmm. so as a toddler, people were always amazed that I could stick her finger and get that blood sample and she didn't flinch, you know, because that's what she knew. Yeah. However, now that she's older, um, there is that element of not wanting to feel different mm -hmm. around her, her, her friends, her peers, her peers yeah. absolutely. And yet she knows that um, not by choice, but she has to live, we have to live this regimented lifestyle. I mean, we don't have a choice in order to keep her alive and, and as healthy as we can, um, there are certain things we have to do, even mm -hmm. if that means doing that around her peers at times. Right. So certainly she's starting to be aware of that, that she's different. But, um, you know, she's the bravest person I know. <laughs> I tell people she's my hero. Mm -hmm. She's a phenomenal, mature little girl who's been through a lot. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And interfacing with her brother as Cameron, I'm sure he's gleaned a lot from her as well. Oh, probably. sure, yeah. sure. He has, and they're very close, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. You know, if a viewer wanted to, needed to get off to work now or off to school, is there a good phone number for someone to learn more mm -hmm. about JDRF? Or, of course, we'll talk about the walk that happened in March in just right. a minute, or even that that website again. Sure, sure. Um, if someone would like to contact me directly, I'm happy to answer questions or um, certainly um, offer suggestions. My number is 843-222-2872. Right. Okay. And I would be glad to, to answer questions. Um, and, and again, I do encourage any of the viewers out there, if they have a loved one with diabetes, right. or um, you know, to visit that website. It is mm -hmm. uh, jdrf.org. It's not only a phenomenal resource, um, there's information there, but there's even an area where children can connect with a pen pal, someone else right? who has diabetes. Oh, right. mm -hmm. good, good. So there's just so much there. You can ask um, doctors questions um, if you have concerns about your child, and endocrinologists all over the country answer those questions for you. Mm -hmm. So it's just a powerful website. Mm -hmm. Is it, did you say there was also an email address that folks could use yes, to sure. contact uh, mm -hmm. the PD division of the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation? That would be great Foundation. if someone wants more information, if they want to get involved on a mm -hmm. local level. Rhonda Weatherford is our walk chair for the PD chapter, which Good. is located in Florence. And that email address is PD, the letters PD, Diabetes Walk at BellSouth.net. Okay, PD Diabetes Walk at BellSouth.net. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very important. And Rhonda's been doing this for a long time. I think we were with mm -hmm. Rhonda around the time we filmed. Um, up near the walk, which was held at Francis Marion. We may have actually filmed at the walk, during mm -hmm. the walk, around that time. Had some Great. tremendous folks in Bob and Nan Kogler mm -hmm. were with us from Color Time, who were long supporters That's of the right. fight against uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. And Bob, a long time sufferer. And of course, you know, they call it juvenile diabetes, mm -hmm. the type one, but of course it uh, impacts folks well into their <laughs> senior years. That's right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the walk that you had uh, back in March. Uh, mm -hmm. You all had, a, uh, I understand, a very successful walk. Where was that held? Mm -hmm. And uh, is there still a way that folks, uh, viewers now, could be involved in trying to help push that goal well beyond? Sure. Uh, yes, we did have a successful walk. 
uh, March 31st, our Walk to Cure Diabetes, the PD chapter, was held at Francis Marion it University. Was good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful day. We had oh, gorgeous yeah. weather for that, and we had uh, several hundred people showed up for that event. And I know that so far, um, the uh, PD chapter has raised about eighty-five thousand dollars, and mm -hmm. the money is still coming in. And you know what's what's very exciting is that um, that money goes directly to those researchers who yes. are are looking for a cure. And oh, yeah. many of those researchers have children who have diabetes also. Is that right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so they mm -hmm. take their um, you know job very seriously. So oh, it's yeah. exciting to know the money is still coming in though. And if anyone wants to make a donation still, that would be wonderful. Right. Um, they can do so uh, by contacting Rhonda at that email address. Sure. Um, they can also go to the website jdrf.org. In fact, on the main page there is a donate button that you can click on, and we would consider it. Um, just an honor if anyone wanted to make a donation in honor of Crystal, uh, oh, my daughter. Great. We can okay, still, Crystal still, Bailey. Right. They'd have type to type in Crystal, Crystal Bailey. Bailey. Great. Crystal's Crusaders. That was Crystal's her walk Crusaders, team, our yeah. family team name. Mm -hmm. And you had folks from all over the area. Absolutely. In on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, diabetes impacts so many, even when it imp particularly that one one child or adult mm -hmm. as they've gotten older, uh, but mm -hmm. clearly so many other folks are impacted by mm -hmm. the, this chronic disease. Right, absolutely. Well, it's just, it's not going away. Mm -hmm. It's something that we, we deal with personally on a day-to-day -ba -day basis, um, mm -hmm. whether we want to or not. It's not something you can take a vacation from. Right. It's something that by the time her feet hit the ground, in fact, before then, my husband mm -hmm. and I still, 10 years later, set our alarm at night to get up and go and check her blood sugars oh during the boy. night. Absolutely. We've done that mm. for 10 years because, you know, she had a seizure one night when her blood sugars went too low and mm. who can sleep after that when your child has a seizure and that could yeah. have resulted in, in death or brain yeah, damage. Right. So um, we do that during the night um, as well. So mm. a cure needs to be found is all I know. And I believe that it will be found in our lifetime. In fact, um, JDRF was founded by parents of children who have diabetes. Back in and that, 1970. That's think, right, right, that's right. It's been around for several years, and that was their goal to find a cure in their children's lifetime. And I believe that we'll do it. You think so? Yes, I do. Great. Mm -hmm. Why do you mm -hmm. feel so good about it? Just because the research advances have been so Absolutely. pronounced? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There are just phenomenal things taking place. You know, several years ago, um, some research took place where. Um, they actually were able to inject islet cells, which are what is destroyed in the pancreas. Yeah, let's they, talk about that in a second, but that, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. They injected that into the, um, um, a group of about 12 or 13 people, a clinical trial. They injected the islet cells into the liver, and the liver began to produce insulin, just like the really? pancreas would oh, do. Oh, mm -hmm. great. And there are certainly side effects to that and risk, but those folks are insulin-free today. And no. that effort was funded by JDRF. So. And some of the risks <laughs> that uh, that folks would need to be worried about, because that sounds like a very exciting potential right. cure Absolutely. that folks would be running toward. Right. When I heard about it, I was just thrilled. You yeah. know, I thought, this is it. We're going to find a We're cure there. before she's in middle school. But um, one of the major risks right now with that particular um, research is that you have to have immunosuppressive drugs for the rest of your life so that your body does not reject those foreign islet cells uh -huh. and so especially for children you know mm -hmm. there's a risk of long-term effects like cancer and mm -hmm. other concerns of taking those uh, heavy-duty drugs for the yeah. rest of your life so mm -hmm. right now they only took a sample of adults um, since she's under the age of 18 it'll be a little while before they'll do any type of clinical trials on her mm-hmm mm -hmm. break down a little bit for viewers who may not be familiar with diabetes mm -hmm. just that when someone hears insulin how does right. that how does it work exactly? Mm -hmm. You're talking about mm -hmm. pricking your daughter's finger. Right. Just to right. maybe the ABCs of, uh, sure. of insulin and just diabetes in general. Right. Well, um, the non-diabetic person, we should all have uh, blood sugars in the normal range, which would be about 75 to 125. And the only, only way you can really check that is through a blood test. Now, the person who has diabetes, um, their body does not, uh, type 1, as we mentioned earlier, right, right. doesn't make um, insulin. And you okay. have to have insulin to survive. Insulin, everyone, everyone, me, everyone right? has yeah. to have insulin to survive. That um, is the way that we turn food into energy. Okay. And if we cannot do that, we're, we're starving. And our body starts to break down the fat in our, in our body instead. And it um, becomes a very serious situation. It's called uh, DKA for short. 
diabetic ketoacidosis, and that's what Crystal had when she was initially diagnosed and, and why it was so severe. Um, so it's important that the diabetic keep their blood sugars in that normal range as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to do finger sticks and check the blood. And, you know, Crystal sticks her finger by herself now. Um, and how often does she do that daily? Oh, my word. She... Eight to ten times oh, a day. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, we have to. Well, and especially children. There are adults who don't have to check quite that often. Right. Usually before your major meals of the day and before bedtime. But okay. as a child, you know, they're active. Activity can make right. your blood sugars drop. Mm. Um, if she's sick, heaven forbid, children pick up colds and viruses all the time. If they're mm -hmm. sick, um, then the blood sugars uh, tend to go way up. And the higher they are, the more likely she is going to experience severe complications down the road. The higher they are, the more likely. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm. So it's important to keep it in that normal range. And then once they go too low, there's that mm -hmm. risk of seizures, uh, brain damage, um, and certainly even death. Mm. So it's a fine balance. And you always have to check uh, you know, the blood sugars. And then you have to count every portion of food that goes into your body, into your mouth. Um, to count the carbohydrate intake. Is this, this your 10-year-old daughter is doing that? As, well, regular, she is. She yeah. really, um, you know, mom helps her some as right. far as counting but the carbs. But it's cool, yeah. I mean, you're not around. Sure, no, absolutely. She's grabbing anything absolutely. out of someone else's And she is so, she's so mature. You know, if she has, um, you know, kids have birthday parties and cupcakes sure. with icing and all that, and she knows she can't have that. And right. she'll ask for a Ziploc bag, and she'll put it in her little Ziploc bag and bring it home to me right. and say, Mom, this is what they had today. Could I have this later today? And if her blood sugars go low and she needs a little energy, I might take the icing off and let her have part of the cupcake. But mm. she has to be disciplined in that manner or she's not going to be around very long. I mean, in fact, um, it's staggering to me, I guess, still today to think that the average diabetic will live 15 years less than the non-diabetic. So, um, uh, and, and again, she's had it all of her life. So The average diabetic will live 15 years less mm -hmm. than uh, the non-diabetic. Absolutely. Mm. About 15 mm. years is taken mm. off their life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's a startling figure. And, of course, even yeah. just uh, whether your daughter's watching right now, I mean, that's a right. difficult thing for anyone yeah, to hear, absolutely. to think that through and to know that the real goal there, as you said, a lot of the researchers' children have diabetes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of the folks raising dollars, the $122 million, which was invested last year alone right. into research, uh, clearly there is a push mm -hmm. there and more than a billion dollars raised mm -hmm. since its inception. So mm -hmm. clearly a lot of efforts there. Uh, Absolutely. Of course, uh, if, if you're able to utilize insulin, there's still a real desire there to push forward. I know in trying to uh, come up with some questions earlier this morning, there's a, a real need even for folks who are utilizing insulin to come up with a cure well sure I think that everyone that we know either has a loved one who has right. diabetes a friend who has diabetes um, you know it's uh, it's an enormous cost to our health care system right. I really right. don't don't know the figures on that oh yeah I, they're startling mm -hmm. jdrf.org has them right yeah. right I've seen them before on that and so I think that this is a group effort this isn't something that we should sit by and say well that family next door who has diabetes we will let them worry about it right. it's something that we should all be involved in and all feel good about taking a part in and knowing that we made a difference somehow down yeah. the road when that cure is found yeah mm -hmm. yeah a lot of the folks out at the walk I mean anecdotally when you're, when you're thinking about the walk a lot of those were folks other than than just loved ones of family members oh, uh, or family members of uh, mm -hmm. children with diabetes there were a heck of a lot of folks out there who mm -hmm. had no direct tie but, but indirectly know it's critical to support. That's right. It was very exciting to see, you know, these walk teams form together. There were family walk teams. Uh, there were company walk teams. We mm -hmm. saw Bank of America out there with their bright red T-shirts on. Right, and, great. Uh, it was very exciting to see a lot of the local businesses come in and realize that this is important and, and not to be taken lightly. Glad you mentioned T-shirts. You brought a T-shirt with you this morning. I did. Yeah, well, tell us about the T-shirt, <clears throat> Crystal's Crusaders. Absolutely. I wanted to brag on Crystal's T-shirt. Since she's 10 this year, she was old enough to uh, design her own T-shirt with the help of Odyssey Printing. Thank yes, you so much. Yes, they, and Carolina uh, Pavement Marking. Absolutely. They um, bought our T-shirts for us, and Odyssey Printing gave us a terrific deal. And she said, I think Crystal's Crusaders would be good, Mom, because we're going to fight diabetes and I win this battle. It. Good alliteration there. Yeah. Crystal's Crusaders fighting to cure diabetes Absolutely. 2007.
So we had about about 20 of us um, showed up for our family walk team. Is that right? All wearing these. Uh, yes, all wearing these bright lime green shirts. So we stood yeah. out. It was easy yeah. to find each other, and uh, and actually we have raised as a family walk team over the past couple of months um, just over four thousand dollars. Is that toward right? That effort of eighty-five thousand. How many t-shirts did y'all have? We ended up ordering sixty t-shirts. So Is we've that got right? a few extra if you want one, Greg. Good. <laughs> wow. Well, I I tell you, speaking of t-shirts, this past Saturday we were out at uh, Walk America, Coastal Carolina University, sure. uh, helping to. Uh, save babies, obviously, much right. like mm -hmm. the fight to find a cure to, uh, for diabetes. Mm -hmm. And the Herald had uh, bought 3,000 T-shirts wow. for uh, 10 area schools, 300 per school, and they went out and sold uh, and raised a ton of money. Great, almost 20 grand, uh, literally from the sale of T-shirts alone. So mm -hmm. selling 3,000 T-shirts, and it is a great opportunity for businesses. And I hope you'll contact folks mm -hmm. next year. Great opportunity for mm -hmm. businesses. It was great for the Herald to see. Thousands of kids out this or tons of folks out with a big Herald logo on the back, but at the same time knowing the goal of helping in that instance to save babies mm -hmm. and fight prematurity and in this instance of course to help find a cure to diabetes. It's a great, great idea getting Absolutely. on T shirts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's well. a great thing. Well, I'm so glad Crystal did that. Mm -hmm. Of course we've got this beautiful picture of Crystal here and uh, yes, absolutely. That's mm -hmm. a beautiful shot. We want to uh highlight her. She's a beautiful young lady. Thanks. She's a big girl now. You and Scott uh, both. Is that, uh, are you, are you all from around this area? Well, I grew up in this area. Did which you is really? Socrates High School. Oh, yes, yes. And I'm back home now um, living in Conway. And Scott is from Winston-Salem, the North Carolina area. Good. But, but this is home now to us. So. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. And of course, uh, with a newborn on the way, a lot uh, have you all taken the time to even contemplate it on a relatively somber note to, to look into it? Can you find ahead of time right. if your child will be impacted by uh, diabetes? Right. Well, and some of the research that JDRIF does as well, not only finding a cure, which is their main goal, but also um, things like vaccines. They're mm -hmm. working on a vaccine right now to prevent diabetes because it's, it's become almost an epidemic in young children now. And um, there is a way that you can do a blood um, test to determine the likelihood of your child developing type 1 um, by the time they're 30. And we have not done that in the past because right. there wasn't really, to me, I thought, well, you know, what are we going to do about it? Sure. But now that they're working on vaccines and working all these things, um, we're considering it. Mm -hmm. So it may be something that we do uh, to both this child and Cameron in the future. Right, mm -hmm. right. What are some other things during the year that folks could do uh, mm -hmm. uh, to help uh, in raising dollars? Right. To, to find a cure to diabetes. Are there other events other than the walk that was held on March, was it 31st, March right, 31st? Right, March 31st. Absolutely. Um, again, I think just staying in touch with that local chapter, they'll let you know of what does become available. But I know that annually they usually have a golf tournament, mm -hmm. um, which is always very exciting. I know we held a golf tournament through Sparks Toyota that raised $2,500. And yeah. um, then they often have um, silent auctions and dinners and a lot of things that you can do um, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I would just say get plugged in. Get plugged in if you want to make a difference um, uh, to Rhonda and to the PD area walk. That's great. And of course, you talked about, you said there's a good phone number if someone wanted to call mm -hmm. at the 843. Mm -hmm. Right, 222-2872. Okay, 222-2872. Mm -hmm. And again, for viewers who may have missed you earlier, you mentioned an email address. Right, that is PD, the letters PD, Diabetes Walk at bellsouth.net. Okay, great. And the big uh, national website, and they probably have links right. back to the local chapters. And they do, uh, yes. Sure. You can search the local chapter. Our local chapter is in Florence. Right. So you would need to type in uh, Florence, South Carolina, but uh, jdrf.org okay. is the, the website. That's fantastic, mm -hmm. Monica. You know, as you think back to that first time, that, mm -hmm. that, that experience back at your daughter's birth, mm -hmm. I mean, around, around her birth at nine right. months old mm -hmm. of of uh, ex having her diagnosed and recognizing that she was going to get beyond that cold, mm -hmm. but it was a lot more than just a bad uh, bad sinus right. uh, infection. Had you ever contemplated that y'all would get through? I mean, you know, what, what was it like right. back then? Mm -hmm. uh, trying to imagine ten years mm -hmm. forward, or even mm -hmm. thinking about that ten years back. Uh, well, you know, initially, I think that we go through what most parents go through: um, the shock. You don't really want to accept this, that this is your brand new baby that seems perfect. And, right. and then you probably, we went through um, a stage of fear 
um, you know, this was, it was horrifying. We had five days in the hospital to learn how to give shots to this newborn baby and mm. the talk of brain damage and seizures and mm. it was just terrifying. And knowing that this would never go away, that was one of the questions I asked. I said, well, don't children outgrow this? Oh, and the endocrinologist said, absolutely not. She'll have this for the rest of her life. Um, and then, though, I think something inside you says, you know what, we're going to do this. Right. And we're going to make a difference and we're going to live with this and we're going to help others and somehow turn this daily challenge, this battle, into a blessing for someone else. Those are great words. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you all have done that. Thanks so much for being with us this Thank morning. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. I Absolutely. appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Monica Bailey coming up next. I heard Monica say these powerful figures off camera. Every three minutes an American dies from complications related to diabetes. Every 30 seconds an American is a new case is diagnosed in America. 184 million persons worldwide. 184 million. Not 184,000, 184 million persons worldwide impacted by the devastating effects of uh, diabetes. These are a couple of powerful quotes at the JDRF.org website. A couple of, but two teenagers and 11 year old, listen to this, listen to this. I already have problems with my kidneys and I take medicine every day so my kidneys won't fail. I worry about what will happen if a cure isn't found soon. I don't have time to wait. This is a, that's an 11 year old in Ohio. Diabetes is always here. You heard Monica say it earlier, and this child backs that up. There is never a vacation. It's like a bad dream that lasts all day, all year, for my entire life. A 16-year-old in New York, and this last quote, very powerful. Every day I have to endure up to six injections of insulin and more than 10, and you heard Monica say that, more than 10 finger pricks to keep me alive. What a key word. When my blood sugar is high, my head hurts, I feel angry and sad, it's hard to concentrate. When my blood sugar is low, I'm dizzy, shaky, and in danger of becoming unconscious. Emma Melton, age 16 in Massachusetts. This is not only impacting those children, but their loved ones. Make a difference. Make a difference. Go online to JDRF.org or call 843-222-2872.